Okay, so today we introduce the idea of logical equivalence, and we'll illustrate that with two simple examples, double negation and commutation. So in English, we often say that two or more statements or propositions mean exactly the same thing. For example, if Bob and Janet are coming to dinner, you could equally well express this as Bob and Janet are coming to dinner. Janet and Bob are coming to dinner. It's not the case that neither Bob nor Janet are coming to dinner. Bob is coming to dinner and Janet is not not coming to dinner. Now, of course, saying it in these final two ways is ridiculous and we'd never say it that way, but they are, as we say, logically equivalent. What would also be ridiculous is for somebody to uh, suggests that these two don't mean exactly the same thing. If somebody said, I thought you said Janet and Bob are coming to dinner, not that Bob and Janet are coming to dinner, then you would um, certainly think that there was something the matter with them. So the idea that two propositions are logically equivalent can be expressed in ways that are, uh, well, logically equivalent. So for example, A is logically equivalent to not not A. Uh, actually implies all of the following. A and not not A have the same truth table. That only occurs when the two propositions are logically equivalent. A can be derived from not not A and vice versa. That, that can only happen when the uh, propositions are logically equivalent. That is to say both, right? Um, the biconditional, A if and only if, not not A, is a tautology. That biconditional is a tautology only if these are logically equivalent. And the biconditional, A if and only if, not not A, can be derived from zero premises, from no premises. Now, we haven't talked about that idea. Um, we, we will later, though. That's the idea of something being a theorem. Okay, so the concept of logical equivalence is important in doing natural deduction because it provides us with a further method of really simplifying our proof procedures. So the basic idea here is that when two formulas, A and B, have been shown to be logically equivalent, then one may be substituted for the other at any point in a proof. So up to this point, um, we've never done anything that can properly be described as substitution. We've only just um, been able to apply rules that allow us to derive a formula from one or more other formulas. Now, it's not that when we do substitution, we're not doing something that can be described as derivation. We are, but substitution is a more a uh, powerful kind of derivation, as we'll see in a moment. So the main difference between substitution and ordinary garden variety derivation is this. When using the basic inference rules that we've learned already, you must always be working on the main operator. And this is not required when working with equivalences. This is one reason it's essential to know when you're working with an inference rule and when you're working with an equivalence. So we will introduce equivalences in a different order than the book does, and uh, we'll not talk about all of them that the book gives names for because some of them aren't that useful. And also sometimes I'm gonna introduce shorter abbreviations than the book uses. You're free to use either. So the simplest equivalence is double negation, which we write as dn, just the way the book does. Now equivalences can be expressed in different ways, but we're going to go with this one. So double negation says uh, that a if and only if not a, and I use this turnstile just to indicate that we are um, identifying an equivalence. The turnstile actually tells us more than we need it to. It tells us that A if and only if not A is a theorem which can be introduced into a proof at any time that can be derived from no premises. Uh, but you can just read it for the time being as saying that these two statements are logically equivalent. 
Okay, so if you understand what we've said, you'll realize that uh, double negation and um, negation elimination, the rule you already know, are, are not the same thing. They're not the same animal. Negation elimination is just a basic rule of inference that uh, allows you to infer A from not not A, right? So this is old hat, but negation elimination allows you to go from not not A to A only, right? by negation elimination. But double negation allows you to substitute these expressions at any time. So what double negation allows you to do is if you have not not a, you can substitute a, which you might say is a way of describing what negation elimination allows you to do, but it also allows you to go from A to not not A, right? And that's by double negation. Sometimes people, to show that you can go both ways, you'll see books that write two lines like that rather than one. So, Hence, double negation allows you to infer A from not not A and also not not A from A. Okay, so actually, since double negation allows you to do anything that negation elimination can do, it's okay to stop using negation elimination if you'd like to. Uh, it's actually perfectly dispensable. The only caveat there is that if, let's say, on a test you were specifically prohibited from using uh, double negation. So, for example, I might ask you to prove a derived rule um, using only the non-derived rules as an exercise. And in that case, you wouldn't be able to, to use double negation. Okay, so let's just look at the power that we get just from introducing the double negation rule. Here is a proof of a really uninteresting result, right? If P then Q, from if P then Q, we can infer if P then not not Q. Well, of course we can because Q and not not Q mean the same thing. But look how much work we have to do to prove it given everything up until the equivalences. We assume if P then Q, then we have to hypothesize P uh, for conditional introduction, right? But then what do we do? Well, we could go ahead and get Q right away, but that's not 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 Q, and we can't just tack those not nots on. So what do we do? Well, we actually have to do a negation introduction, right? For negation introduction, um, we introduce not Q, and then we uh, get Q by conditional elimination, which gives us a contradiction. Uh, and at that point, we can assert the negation of the hypothesis, not not Q, by 3, 5, negation introduction. And finally, we can assert the full conditional. So that's a seven-step proof. Nothing major, of course, given what we're used to at this point, but it's tedious, given how, like I say, trivial the result is. So what can we do uh, once we have dn? Well, we can do that. Right? We can just get, say, okay, assumption, if P, then Q. Well, then P, if P, then not, not Q by one and double negation. Why can we do that? Well, because this rule allows us to work on any subformula, right? We can apply it directly to Q, even though the conditional is the main operator. And so that's a really big deal. It's really uh, common for... Uh, Equivalence is to allow us to do exactly this, to prove things directly, quickly, without involving uh, hypothetical rules. We still have to have the hypothetical rules, but there's just sometimes we can get away without using them. Okay, well, there's another simple equivalence which we'll introduce right now, and that's uh, commutation, which applies to disjunctions and con conjunctions. Now, these are two distinct equivalence is completely because conjunctions and disjunctions are not the same thing, but 
they're analogous, right? Uh, and the book uses the same um, the same abbreviation for both. In other systems, you know, you would see something like com uh, and and com four, but in this book we just use com uh, because they are so very similar. Both both conjunction and disjunction uh, do not have their meanings affected by order. Okay, so let's just finish by doing a pretty simple proof involving uh, double negation and commutation, the two equivalents as we've just learned. So go ahead and shut us down and see if you can do this on your own. Uh, I, think, I think you probably could. Uh, you should be able to do it pretty, pretty, pretty easily. There's a lot of different ways to do this proof, but we'll just do one way. All right. So if you thought about it for a while, you saw that R and S and S and R are really uh, logically equivalent expressions that you can get, uh, uh, you can get to by just applying commutation to uh, S and R. So S and R can become R and S. So if you could get S and R, you'd be one step away from your conclusion. Can you do, can you get S and R? Well, this is a disjunction, which in the old days would have meant, uh, it looks like you have to do a disjunction elimination. You could do that if you want, but you don't have to now. At least it doesn't look like you have to, because it looks like this is a negation of this, right? So it's not the case that Q and P is a negated version of not not p and not not q. Why? Well, because not not p goes to p, not not q goes to q, and this can be flipped around by commutation. So what is so what does this look like? Well, you can actually do this in in different ways. As I said, you could, if you wanted to, operate on number one and just start making the first disjunct into uh, a version of two, uh, a, negate, a non negated version of two, or you can operate on two and turn it into a negated version of one. So we'll do the latter. So I'm going to go ahead and write uh, not the case that P and Q, now the order I do these in doesn't matter either, but so I'm just going to pick an order. It's not the case that P and Q applying commutation to two. We can do that because this is an equivalence. It doesn't require us to operate on the uh, main connective. And then I could pop in a couple of negations on the P, right, by three and the double negation rule. It's not negation elimination. I'm not eliminating, right? I'm adding uh, two negations in. What I'm really doing here, though, is I'm not adding in two negations. I'm substituting this formula for that formula. So that's really what's happening here. I'm not adding two negations to this formula. I'm substituting this formula for that formula. And then I can also substitute not not Q for Q, right? Not not Q for Q, same thing. Now, at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, gosh, this is tedious. Can I do this in one step? That's quite a legitimate question. The answer is no, you can't. The rules don't permit it. So that's a little tedious, but look, this is, it's nowhere near as tedious as what it would have been without these. So then we can write S and R because five together with six gives us uh, S and R by um, excuse me, 5 together with 1 gives us S and R by disjunctive syllogism. If you haven't uh, learned that rule yet, that's a derived rule, very important rule to get under your belt, as you can see right here. Okay, and then just flip them around. Now again, you're not really flipping them around, you're substituting this formula for that formula. It might seem like a very academic point, but that's really the difference between just doing a derivation and a substitution. You're substituting logically equivalent expressions. Okay, so that's it. So that's a uh, quick introduction to equivalence to a couple of our very simple equivalences. 
and we will uh, we won't have uh, review questions on this, uh, but uh, later on we'll we'll introduce some more complicated equivalences and some review questions. All right.